In times of trouble, we turn to family. And I'm afraid, indeed, these are troubling times. At the ADL, where our mission has been for more than a century to fight hatred and bigotry of any kind, we've been busier than ever in the past several months. And I know the same is true for Janet and for all the hardworking staff at NCLR and around the country. And for all of you who come here today and sit in this room, because all of you, all of us, are on the front lines fighting hate each and every day. And I don't think it will come as a surprise to any of you when I say that we have seen a surge in hatred in this country in recent months from dog whistles to outright slurs, from heartbreaking bullying to horrifying hate crimes, anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim, anti-Semitic, and other bigoted incidences are on the rise. At the ADL, we've been tracking anti-Semitic incidences since the 1970s, and we saw an appalling 34% increase in bias incidences targeting the Jewish community in 2016 over the previous year, and a shocking 86% spike in the first quarter of 2017 versus the first quarter of last year. Looking broadly, the most recent FBI hate crime numbers documented nearly 6,000 hate crimes in 2015, a 7% increase over the prior year. That's an average of 16 hate crimes every single day in this country. Piénsalo. Más de días y siés incidentes cada día. At ADL, we often talk about the pyramid of hate, el pyramide de odio. We use this image because it's a helpful way to think about intolerance. The layers at the bottom are the most widespread and the things that lay the groundwork upon which other forms of hatred can grow and thrive. The base of the pyramid, it consists of biases that persist. The stereotypes, belittling jokes, non-inclusive language, what we might call microaggressions. They're widespread, but low level, and they themselves don't result in direct harm to an individual. But left unchecked, that bias lays the groundwork for individual acts of prejudice, the next level up on the pyramid of hate. And those things include name-calling, slurs and epithets, dehumanizing remarks, and bullying. You may remember a video that ADL and NCLR made some years ago called Code Words of Hate. What together we exposed in that video and what we are hearing even more intensely today is that words that were once used only by white supremacists or the KKK or the so-called alt-right, they've moved from the margins into the mainstream. Look, for years the ADL has been tracking extremist movements and monitoring their messaging and how their messengers cross over into the mainstream. And now on the nightly news and in the halls of government, in speeches by political candidates, and literally in tweets from the president himself, we are hearing words that dehumanize immigrants and demonize refugees. We're hearing terms like sanctuary cities, a phrase that was coined by the anti-immigrant -immigra movement years ago as a derogatory term, suddenly become part of our shared vernacular. And such words have a profound impact on our children and on all of us. And in the days and weeks surrounding the election, our phones rang off the hook at ADL offices across the country. We received countless calls and reports of horrific bullying. For example, at junior high school in Michigan, students formed a physical wall to block Latino students from reaching their classrooms and lockers. In Pennsylvania, students carved swastikas onto bathroom walls and gave the Heil Hitler salute. They yelled anti-gay slurs. They used the N-word and called black students cotton pickers. And these are just a few of the stories. I've got many more. 
and all of them are absolutely, positively unacceptable in our country today. And that's that second layer of this pyramid of hate, individual acts of prejudice directed at a particular person. And just as we're seeing more bias and more individual acts of prejudice, the third level of the pyramid of hate is growing too. And that level is what we would call systemic discrimination against an entire class of people. To fight against such bias, we at the ADL, we use three approaches. Number one, advocacy that drives on issues by working through the courts and through Congress, along with state and local government. Number two, education, working in schools across the country to teach about bias and racism. And we reach more than a million and a half children in classrooms across the country through these programs. And number three, working with law enforcement. We help them to investigate hate crimes and train the men and women who protect us on a daily basis and how they should deal with hate and extremism. Now, our advocacy work, as Joe said, is driven by a robust civil rights team that works in state legislatures around the country to oppose discrimination. Last month, I am proud, I am proud that we testified against a set of anti-immigrant bills in Louisiana that would have defunded sanctuary cities and made it almost impossible for immigrants to marry in the state. Fortunately, the ADL, along with other coalition partners that turned out in force to testify, we were able to kill those bills. But we were not at <laughs> But unfortunately, we weren't as successful in Texas, at least not yet. NCLR and ADL and so many other great organizations have been fighting against one of the most discriminatory anti-immigrant bills we have seen to date. Janet and I have discussed this. I know many of you are talking about it. It's as bad or maybe even worse than SB 1070, this state's notorious anti-immigrant bill. SB 4 in Texas, which not only defunds sanctuary cities, but creates criminal penalties for police that refuse to cooperate with ICE. It's already been challenged in court and we are working with coalition partners to block, to block that terrible law from going into effect. So those are the first three levels on the pyramid. Bias, individual acts of prejudice, and discrimination. Left unchallenged, these phenomena come together to create an environment that's ripe for bias-motivated violence. We've seen many accounts in the news in recent months, deaths and assaults committed against individuals. And I can give you one example. Two men in Boston were recently arrested after they brutally beat a homeless Latino man whose only crime was being in the wrong place at the wrong time. When the police arrested the perpetrators, they said, quote, all these illegals need to be deported. We can't allow hate crimes to continue. None of us can. Quiero decir otra vez, no podemos permitir que esto continue. So what can we do about all this hate? Como luchamos en contra del odio? Creo que respuesta es la unidad. Let me say it again. The answer is unity. Somos unidos. Somos unidos. We have a unity that brings together people of different faiths, different ethnicities, different national origins, but who share a similar commitment to this country, the commitment that our founding fathers held so dear, and to the values that have made it great for over 200 years. Through unity, we can challenge hate at every stage, in every instance, in every way that we can. When we hear a bigoted joke at the water cooler, all of us need to speak up. When you see a stereotype shared on Facebook, don't look away. You need to call it out. When you hear a comment at the dinner table, even from that uncle of yours who you can't stand, 
We must model for our children and teach them with action, not just words, that it just isn't permissible to denigrate others because of how they pray or where they're from or who they love. Beyond settings like our homes or our schools or our workplaces, we must demonstrate unity and lock arms as we challenge discriminatory laws using every tool in our toolbox and at every stage. We must rise up and say enough, bastante, no more. And more than anything, we must confront hate-fueled violence and ensure that those who commit crimes based on identities pay the highest price possible. To do that, we need comprehensive hate crimes laws in this country. And I, here I should actually pause and say thank you, because when ADL announced our 50 States Against Hate campaign almost two years ago to ensure that we have comprehensive hate crimes laws on the books in all 50 States, NCLR was one of the first organizations to raise their hand and say, count us in. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, NCLR. And I can share with you today that the ADL is working on a new program, which I want to share. A new opportunity, I think, for us to partner with NCLR. We are working with the government of Mexico at their request to assist Mexican consulates across the United States and train their consular staff in all 50 locations on how to fight harassment as well as identify and report hate crimes. Think about that. We are now working closely. <clears throat> we are now working closely with the Mexican government and talking to other governments from across Latin America to help them establish reporting mechanisms on their websites so that anyone who experiences or witnesses a hate crime can have a place to report them. This cloud-based Spanish language tracking system will help us aggregate data on hate incidences and activity in the U.S. and to protect those people who might be the victim of crimes but afraid to report it to local law enforcement. And we'll have this process up and running before the end of the summer. Now, I believe that if we work together, the ADL and NCLR, the Jewish community and Latino community, if we collaborate and challenge hate at every turn, we can create an environment in which there is truly no place for hate. We can show that building walls is no answer. Instead, we need to build bridges of trust and partnerships. We can send that message to our mayors. We can get that word to our governors and we can send that signal to the President of the United States. As I said at the beginning of my remarks, we are living in troubled times, but these are the scenarios that led to the creation of our organizations in the first place. And so on this day, on ADL's 104th birthday, again, even though this is a difficult moment, I am really filled with a sense of hope. When we were founded in 1913, anti-Jewish hate was rampant across the United States. Jews couldn't live or work simply where they wanted. They were denied entry to universities and businesses right here in America. And right around the time of our founding, Leo Frank, a Jewish businessman, was falsely accused of a crime, found guilty in a sham trial outside of Atlanta, dragged from his prison cell and lynched, brutally lynched by an angry mob. And in that moment when the future of Jews in this country was uncertain, when our community lacked political power or the economic resources we have today, a small group of people came together and they created ADL. And these activists wrote a charter for this new organization. And they built into the founding creed of ADL a commitment to, quote, stop the defamation of the Jewish people and secure justice and fair treatment to all. Our founders believed that you couldn't have one without the other. To make America truly a great place for the Jews to thrive, all people needed to be treated fairly. And to have a country where all are equal, anti-Semitism and bigotry could not be tolerated. In the words of John Kennedy in his book, A Nation of Immigrants, every ethnic minority in seeking its own freedom helped strengthen the fabric of liberty in American life.
These immigrants are our future. <clears throat> And who are they? They are young and old. They are dynamic and innovative. They are members of our society who are energetically enriching our nation through their involvement and passionate voices. They strengthen our shared fabric. They are dreamers. They are doers. And so who are they? They are all of us. They were my grandparents. Another one of them is my wife of 17 years. But they are all of our spouses. They are all of our grandparents. They are all of our children. They are our present, and they are our future. They are us together. And when so we need to remember, and we need to send the message loud and clear, when we fight for them, we fight for us. And when we fight hatred against immigrants or hatred against Latinos or hatred against Jews, we're not fighting for the other. We're fighting for ourselves. And when we stand together, juntos, against all forms of hate, anti-Semitism, racism, Islamophobia, misogyny, xenophobia, homophobia, estos son nuestros valores. These are our values shared by the ADL and the NCLR. So thank you for helping me to celebrate our birthday, and let's recommit to working together, trabajando juntos para crear un mundo sin odio, a world without hate. Thank you.